All right, Victor, it's awesome to have you. Hi, Jared. It's great to be here today. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Fantastic. So before we talk about Talimia and our partnership and all the wonderful things you're doing in the ecosystem, let's get to know you, right? So who is Victor? Oh, so it's interesting because I asked this question on zero to one. Ah, <laughs> who nice. is Tola? Nice, who is this? nice. So who is Victor? So Victor, um, Victor is a certified life coach. Um, he's a business consultant, you know, and of course, most recently, um, got into the startup space and helping startup founders to really get their feet on the ground, taking them from zero to one. Awesome. Yeah, but my background awesome. is really human capital development. You know, I've done that for like eight years now. Oh, nice, nice. So can you tell us about your background? What was your background like? Your schools? Did you grow up in Lagos? <laughs> Did you grow up in Ikoyi, in the West? You know, just tell us about. So unpopular um, stuff I haven't put out there. Um, I grew up, I was born not in Lagos, Many people don't know this. I was born in Anambra State. Wow. When I was like seven and a half, wow. you know, they shipped me to Lagos. Like <laughs> I jumped out. <laughs> like, like a product. <laughs> I jumped out to, to Lagos, you know, and I've had all my education in Lagos, primary school, secondary school, university. It's almost like, you know, I'm stuck in Lagos and I've come to like Lagos. I kind of like looking back in retrospect, I'm happy that. I stayed back in Lagos. Maybe I wouldn't have been this super smart, you know, no offense to not Lagosians. <laughs> like you the hustle life, right? But, uh, I know. Lagos I know. is where, you know, the know. things are happening. But I loved living in Lagos and it's really opened me up to quite a lot of things. Yeah. Nice, nice. So I would like to know the journey leading to Talimia, Great. right? Where were you? What inspired you to start Talimia? Before we even talk about Talimia. Talimia. That's yeah. a very great question, Jared. Um, so for seven years, I've been doing like human capital development. I've been consulting for people. I've been, you know, doing coaching, you know, and I've had this this passion, right? Of course, we're back to the word passion, but it's important. I've had this passion for transforming people, you know, taking people from this point to this point, you know, and I've done like coaching for about close to more than a hundred entrepreneurs, you know, have signed up for my coaching program. More and than a hundred. Yes, more than a hundred. <laughs> so, and I realized one thing that they lack structure. So when I talk to them, they say things like, oh, hi, Victor, I've made well over 500K, 1 million. There's no actual numbers. And they say, you know, I have more than 200 customers. Yeah. What's the actual number? And this, so, is, this is one of the challenges that most of, you know, these young start, exactly. startup so founders face. They don't have yeah, actual number founders. things. There's no process. There's no standard operating procedure. So I realized that, oh, this is a big problem, you know. I need to take these one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions and build a company out of it. And that's why we started like Talemia, which was even formerly Talem Business School. It was supposed to be like a structured business school for startups. But we realized that startups did not want to, the idea of structure. Do you, do you mind sharing what Talem means? Yeah, so, so Talem, you know, of course, Talemia. And then Talemia, of course. Talemia yeah. is two words, Talem and IA. So Talem means to empower. So it's a Latin word. When we launched Talent Business School, we wanted to just empower them with tools and techniques to really, you know, um, launch their, their businesses and put proper structure. And when we pivoted to Talemia, I was like, what are we going to just call it? We didn't just want to call it Talem. So we said, okay, Talemia. We added IA. So IA is a, um, it's a suffix for words that have anomalies like mm. dementia, oh, nice. anorexia, nice, and nice, things like nice. that. So let's yeah. talk about Talemia a bit, right? Who is the ideal user of Talimia? Who is your ideal customer? Who are you trying to build for? And what are you actually building? Anybody trying to launch anything is our ideal customer. You know, anybody in their early stage, you know, those, we can call them the so babies. I, if I'm trying to sell business. farm products, tomatoes, are you, am I your ideal user? As long as you're trying to launch a business, you are my ideal Not user. Not just a tech startup. Not just. So again, oh, we're predominantly tech. But of okay. course, we have had to consult or help non-tech businesses because again, non-tech businesses still power the economy. So, but of course, we are predominantly technology, you know, and that's like, that's like the people who are trying to sell. Awesome. So let's talk a bit about your products, right? Because yeah. I know you have Tech League, you have a couple of products in Talimia. Mm. So do you mind sharing what those products are about? So currently we've got four products, zero to one, you know, Builder, Hacker, and Tech League. So zero to one is like the free, um, Twitter space sessions that we do. So we try to bring in 
top-notch people to come just share vulnerable stuff, practical stuff, like, you know, back in. Uh-huh, <laughs> we, nice, we bring them true. on board and people have learned a lot. We brought people from, you know, Piggy Vest, Paystack, lots of, you know, tech about, lots of many people, you know, come on board to share. And then we have um, Hacker, which is like the high level um, business consulting product. Now, some of these founders that have launched, they need exclusive handholding. So they launch on Builder, which is like a community, it's like mm, an open community, mm, I right? I see. And it's subscription based. You just charge an annual subscription. Then for Hacker, you know, you get to subscribe to a plan. It's like a buffet. So you get to eat what you want. You okay. want marketing, you want to launch, you want to grow your team, you want to hire, whatever it is, you know. And we also have like pockets of value added services. We realize that most of these founders, are having a hard time. I mean, personal experience. Victor, my web developer is stressing me out. Victor, I need a logo designer. Victor, I need a UI UX person. And they will say, you know what? We need to bring in value added services to our packet of products, which is we vet some experts and we have them in house. And then you can hire a Talemian, you know, um, ad hoc expert, either uh, UI UX, logo builder, whatever it is, I you see. know. That would help you launch, grow, and scale. So we have everything in-house. Awesome, awesome. So you've been been speaking about help, help, help for a very long time. And I understand founders at the very early stages, first-time founders. They don't have money. They don't have money, exactly. You know where I'm going to, exactly. So my question for you is, how do you monetize, right? Because... I understand that, you know, a lot of them are bootstrapping at that very early stage. Not very many of them, especially for first time founders, are privileged enough to raise money, precede funding at that very early stage. So how do you monetize and how do you get these founders, you know, to pay something for the services that you offer? So, um, you know, money follows value, right? And money... um, kind of like circulates or clusters around where value is highest, right? So a bottle of water in traffic is a hundred naira. A bottle of water in Eco Hotel is like a thousand naira. So the same content, but different. So over the, over the, over the past one year, we've been able to show that we can build value and we charge for, you know, our services, right? Of course, we try to be considerate because they are building. We try to support but we charge and we deliver, you know, value for what we charge for. And Gerard, I mean, I mean, there's this, there's this adage in my language, I'm Igbo, that says you use money to chase money. So, I mean, you really can't, literally can't build a business off of nothing. You need money. So we charge and we deliver value for what we charge for. So from day one, we're charging. There's no, um, we just try to do a couple, like I said, the zero to one is free, you know, just a way to say, okay, to support, to help. But we charge for, you know, hacker. There are different plans. You know, we charge for builder. Like I said, it's a subscription product. And of course, we've, we've been able to show value for the things that we do. So yeah, we charge. Awesome. Awesome. You know, so, you know, we recently entered into partnership. a partnership, yeah. Gerald Black and so Talimia, it. right? Yeah. For, you know, those who don't know about this, for the purpose of them, I'll be sharing, right? Gerald Black and Talimia recently entered into a partnership to showcase and just beam the spotlight to very early stage founders at their, you know, early stages Mm. who don't have that platform to share what they're building, right? So we'll be doing a lot together in the ecosystem to try and contribute our quota to see how we can showcase people that are building stuff at very early stages, right? So I know you have a lot of questions for me. I also have a couple of, you know, other questions for you. But before I go into those questions, right, because we're like partners now. Yeah, great. And this is meant to be a conversation. It's, it's not like some interview, right? Fantastic. So do you have some questions for me? Yeah, definitely. Well? You know, I'm so excited, guys. I'm so excited about this partnership. You know, I look forward to amazing stuff, you know, from this incredible partnership. So the question I have for Gerard would be, why you know why you decide to you know get into PR? Is there <laughs> some hidden money in PR you oh want to latch on? I mean, okay, I, why, I didn't why? see that. I didn't see that coming. So I I think for me, I didn't decide okay. to go into PR. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, I think this whole thing started during the COVID lockdown. Right. Um, I was at home. You know, of course, you know, I was building packets before yeah. we got acquired, and um, yes, and uh, quite unfortunately. Um, our product, which is Packet, has you know some things to do with physical locations where people come to, 
And because these physical locations were shut down at that time, we couldn't really do much. And I was interested in sharing, you know, some of my perspective on certain matters because then I used to work in church and teens church precisely, the youth church where, um, we work with young folks, right? So basically then I had some ideas I had wanted to share and I decided to, you know, build a platform for myself where I could interact with young people. So that's where it started. I started making videos from my home. Although I've archived all those videos now, <laughs> because now that I looked at some of them, they were so unprofessional and I didn't want to have those videos up there. But basically that's where the entire interest, you know, came up from. And since then, I've always wanted to do this, right? So I don't think, for me, it's not a PR thing. It's me just wanting to have real life conversations with people, right? And the reason why it's called back end is for you to share those stories that are not captured in conventional press, right? So those things you see in tech blogs, in on newspapers and the rest, you have certain things that you're not putting out there, right? So what's going on behind all of that, yeah. right? I want people to see this as a, as a safe space where they could share some of the challenges they face, right? And let people also know there's, there's another side to it. There's a back end where you don't see certain things that you're going through because founders go through a lot, right? I know building packets, it had its awesome times and it had its hellish times as well, right? There were some times I was like, oh my God, can I just run away from this thing, right? So who's going to tell those stories so that people know, especially emerging founders, so that you know it's not just all rosy because every time we see people raising, 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 right? But who's telling the stories of what's really going on, right? So that's what I aim to achieve by, by doing this. So my right. second question would be, you know, for us at Talimi, attraction is like our big word now, you know, get fast attraction. And traction for us literally is growth. So on the premise of that, what does traction in terms of growth mean, you know, for you in terms of this partnership in the next five years, where do you see this whole thing that we just started today? You know, so I'm going to borrow a word from something you said. You okay. said, you know, when you build value, yeah, it's almost unavoidable that you attract the right kind of growth that you're looking out for. Fantastic. So what I look out to achieve from this, what I'm looking to achieve from this is to give people the value that they don't get elsewhere, right? So mm. what are you looking out for? Can you tell your stories? Can you come and share those, your vulnerabilities? Let people know what's really going on. This is a safe space, right? And at the same time, it's also a platform for you to share with the world what you're actually building, mm. right? It's just that we're going to take some steps back and also unveil some things that are happening behind the scenes, yeah. you, you understand? All right, so Victor, I have two more questions for you, actually. I think the first one for me would be, I understand this is the first tech product that you're building. That's Talimia, right? And I'm sure it must have been really challenging for you. So do you mind sharing some of the challenges you've been facing while trying to build this? I think the most critical, or I believe the most critical one was the times I wanted to give up on what I was building. I'd called my team when we like, we normally have like monthly performance review sessions, like our MPRs, you know, so in one of the MPRs, I told them that, Hey guys, I'm tired. Like I want to give up. I can imagine. I can imagine. <laughs> I literally wanted to just, I you know, wanted to, I was, I, I didn't know what we we're doing. So I said, I don't know what we're doing. And that's also to put it out there to founders who might be in that I mean, creatives call it writer's block or content block or something. So there's also this um, founder's block where it appears like, so some of the times I don't even know what we're doing at Talimia. It looks like, oh, it's all rosy. It's all fine out there, man. You guys are killing it. But <laughs> I didn't know what we're yeah. doing. So those times were really the most critical times. But of course, I, I, I have like a very super, superb team who would say, oh, Vio, I mean, we trust you, you know, we, we, we appreciate your leadership, you know, and we know that this is something that you can walk through. Just hang in there. We're going to help you through this phase, right? So I also sort of like lean back to the team, right? And that's why it's super important for founders to really develop their teams really super early so that when, it, when push comes to shove, you can lean back to them and they can help you, you know, get back on track. Yeah. So that period was really challenging awesome, for me. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, my last question would be the future of Talimia, right? right? So where do you see Talimia in a couple of years? What, uh, what, what is the future for you? That's very... Are, so, are you looking to get acquired? Are you, <laughs> IPO? <laughs> <laughs> you 
you know, I made a joke to Victor Fatomi that, I mean, who am I? How much am I made in this life to be blaming Figma? <laughs> Can for you being, imagine? I mean, what's I, wrong I, with I've people? seen the trends on Twitter. Just keep, like, just are you freaking guys keep quiet. For I mean, just, just sit quiet. 20 and, billion. Are you and guess for what? Real? It's free users that are complaining. Free, well, let's leave that. So let me answer the question. <laughs> so the future for Talemia, basically, Jared, is at least 10 million um, early stage founders in our ecosystem. So we're building not just a community. It's a community now, but it's an ecosystem, you know, in the next few years to come. And one millions, at least 10 million um, African founders interacting, collaborating, co-creating, shipping crazy products out of Africa. Awesome. Awesome. This has really been interesting, Victor. Thank you. It's been inspiring as well. And I'm Same here. I'm definitely sure the work you're doing with young founders, emerging founders, first-time founders, will go a very long way black in helping founders. Ah, black <laughs> founders. We'll go a very long way in helping the ecosystem. Yeah. True. Really appreciate you. Thank you so much Thank you, for Jared. gracing this podcast. It's much appreciated. And I'm really looking forward to our partnership. Great. And just before we go, before your final words, hey guys, if you're building an interesting tech product, would like to give you massive visibility guess what you don't even know how much this is worth we don't want to spill the beans right now but if you think what you're building you know it's crazy enough why not just go um hit the link you can see on the screen and then just apply right it's very important that you apply we're going to vet we're going to be sure that you know we're picking the best of the best of the best so just go and apply and we'll be sure to bring you back end if you fit into the kind of startup that we're looking to feature Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Victor. Much appreciated.